Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthy Hong Kong. So I'd like to start with a disclaimer. During this video I will share some articles from the web and my personal experience and this is not medical advice. So recently there's been a lot of discussion about whether surgical masks are helpful in protecting you from co the coronavirus. So let's have a look at some news articles and some scientific studies on the subject. The first case comes from Korea and involves the transmission of COVID-19 inside an elevator. So a mother and her two children took a ride in an elevator with a minister from a local church who had already contracted the virus. So they were in the, in the elevator for around two minutes and the mother and the minister were not wearing masks and during that time she contracted the disease. However, her two children who were wearing masks were later tested negative. So my second article comes from China, and this is a write-up based on a study done by the uh, Center for Disease Control and Prevention in Wuhan, China. So the study followed a passenger on a long-distance bus and uh, the number of people that he infected. So here we have a diagram showing the, uh, the layout of the bus and where the passenger was seated. So he is this uh, red person here, and he is designated passenger A. And the orange people in the bus were those who were infected uh, during the journey. The blue person was also infected, but uh, he showed no symptoms. And then the rose-colored person, he was infected, but he was infected after the uh, original person had already got off the bus. So if we look at the specific findings from the report, so the first one of these is that the virus can linger in the air for up to 30 minutes. So this comes from this, uh, the rose-colored person catching the disease 30 minutes after the original uh, carrier had already got off the bus. And the second thing is that it can travel up to 4.5 meters. So the CDC says that the safe distance is 1.8 meters. The NHS has it at two meters. But we can see from the diagram on the bus that the distance it actually traveled is you know, up to 4.5 meters. And so it looks like the, the safe distances need to be extended. So they also looked at uh, how long the virus will survive on different surfaces. And um, they said that, it, and they found that it can survive for a number of days although the amount of time that it, that it will survive depends on the, uh, the temperature and the surface that it's, that it's on. Um, but I, that's a detailed topic that would really requires its own video. So another thing that they noticed was that the passenger, although he was feeling sick, he did not wear a mask. And so this may have contributed to the number of people that he, he infected during his journey. So the report followed the, followed the uh, person after he got off this first bus and he actually got onto a minibus where he infected, infected a further two people. And again, the furthest one of these was sitting 4.5 meters away from where he was. So in total, he infected, a num he infected uh, 11 people during this journey. Uh, so what the key, one of the key findings that did come out of the report is that the researchers said that none of the passengers in the two buses who wore face masks were infected. And so they said it vindicated the decision to ask people to wear face masks in public. So my next two cases are really showing how easy it is to get the disease if you're not wearing a mask. So the first one of these comes from Korea. And here we see COVID-19 transmitted between two people who are not wearing masks during a brief conversation. So a delivery man went to see an acquaintance of his who runs an ice cream shop and had a brief discussion with him. So it was, so when it was confirmed that the uh, ice cream owner had COVID-19, the delivery man was also tested and found to be positive. So health authorities presumed that the delivery man was infected with COVID-19 during that conversation. So my second case comes from China. And in this case, a man who was not wearing a mask 
stood next to an infected woman in, a, in the uh, market for 15 seconds. And that was all it took for him to catch the disease. So I think these two, these two cases show how, how quickly this disease can spread if you're not wearing a mask. So let's take a look at a couple of scientific papers which look at surgical masks and how effective they are. So the first one of these comes from the Journal of Hospital Infection and is called The Effectiveness of Surgical Masks Against Influenza Bioaerosols. And we can have a look at their key findings here. So it says, you know, the live influenza virus was measurable from the air behind all surgical masks tested. So it's not 100%, definitely you know, some viruses can get through the mask. The data indicate that a surgical mask will reduce exposure to aerosolized infectious influenza viruses. Reductions range from 1.1 to 55 fold, average of six fold, depending on the design of the mask. So this would definitely say that wearing a mask would help protect you from influenza-like viruses. So my second study comes from the School of Public Health and Community Medicine in uh, Sydney, Australia, and was also by Dr. Holly Seal. So it is a review of medical masks and respirators for use during an influenza pandemic. So Dr. Seal was reviewing the existing studies and she felt that up until 2009, most of the data was uh, anecdotal or not really valid. But she did look at two, two studies that happened in 2009. And so the first one of these is uh, this uh, clustered randomized trial comparing surgical masks, um, P2 uh, masks and no mask in terms of the prevention of uh, influenza-like illnesses in households. So the outcome of this was that the intention to treat analysis showed no significant difference in the relative risk of ILI in the mask groups compared with control groups. Now, the issue with this statement is that it's intention to treat analysis. So intention to treat analysis is based on just looking at the groups that, as they were assigned and not how much they adhere to the protocols and the rules that are set up. And so this was specifically identified by the people who wrote the report, saying that less than half the subjects wore masks most of the time. And in fact, they went on to have a look at what happened if we did have proper adherence and say, Adherence to mask use significantly reduced the risk of ILI-associated infection with a hazard ratio of 0.26. So a hazard ratio of 0.26 means that roughly for every one person who wore a mask and caught the disease, four people who did not wear masks would have caught the disease. So there was also another report. So this one actually was taken in Hong Kong. And uh, this is another randomized trial and that they, their outcome showed that they had a significant benefit of both hand hygiene and face masks in preventing influenza disease transmission in households. So I think taken together, these two scientific reports show that having a mask is definitely helpful in combating uh, coronavirus spread. I just wanted to highlight Macau as a success case in dealing with the coronavirus. Hong Kong and Macau are in the top five most densely populated places in the world, and they are just adjacent to mainland China. However, the infection rate has not been as high as other locations, and it's possible that common mask usage is part of this. So Macau had a record of 10 cases, all of whom have recovered. The Transport Bureau then issued an edict saying that anybody who wished to use public transport had to wear a mask. Otherwise, they would not be allowed on board. This, along with other measures the government had taken, reduced the number of cases down to zero for 40 days until one recently was imported. For myself, I'm a Westerner living in Hong Kong and was reluctant to wear a mask originally, but have now got used to it. Whenever I go out, I wear a mask, both to protect myself and my family. The virus has an incubation period of 1 to 14 days, and 17.9% of people show no symptoms at all. It is therefore possible for you to have the virus but not be aware of it. In this case, wearing a mask will help protect others from contagion. We can all make an effort to help break the chain of infection in our community. So I hope this video has provided you with useful information. I have added links 
in the description below to all the articles that I mentioned for your reference. Please do make your own judgment. So thank you very much for watching and I will add more information in future videos. Please all take care and I will speak to you soon.